Hey, how's it going? Uh, Ty Gay here with my good friend Henry Akins. And a while back, we did a video called the Hicks and Gracie Choke. It's our most watched video on YouTube, and I said that there were some missing details in there, and if I showed you, I might get in trouble, and Henry might have to come down and choke me out. So, luckily, it's Thanksgiving down here in Oklahoma, and so I'm super thankful to have him in, and as a gift, he's gonna show us some of the missing details in the choke, so take it away, boss. Let's do it. So, um, you're on your back. I think you started from uh, showing the gift wrap position. Yeah. The nice thing with the with setting up the gift wrap position is, uh, I just need your arms up a little bit, right? And so we can either do that with slaps, right? But this is pretty much enough. I'm just gonna put my hand behind his elbow, so it has nothing to do with pushing his arm across. And that's the thing that's crazy with this setup. It's such a powerful position, this gift wrap position. Um, I'm really surprised I don't see it being used more in MMA, especially when Hickson demonstrated how effective it was where you're able to really do um, an unlimited amount of damage to your opponent and you've killed all of their defense. So they were not able to defend. Once you get them in this position, there's not really any defense from strikes where a lot of times you see guys punching from here and they're, you know, guys are flailing on the bottom, turning side to side and you know, half of the strikes are connecting, but the other half of the strikes are kind of hitting arms. So right. anyways, just from here, I just put my hand here on his elbow and I glue my elbow to my hip. So pull your elbow down. Can't. Okay. So that's the thing. It's never, it's never about me pushing the elbow. Obviously, if there's strikes involved, it's much easier. I can throw, see? And I'm just going to put my hand behind his elbow and I glue my elbow to my hip. Okay. So right now, everything's connected. My elbow's resting even on my hip and my thigh. So if he tries to pull his elbow down, everything's connected. Now I'm just going to move my chest behind his arm. And now I move my chest towards his face and that pushes his arm to the other side. And I'm making sure that I'm leaning on my chest so that there's a lot of weight. Pull your arm. Some people are trying to force it. Just, just lean your weight behind the arm. Pull your arm back. There's no way. Okay. Now we'll come underneath the head. Trap the arm. Okay. Now for here, once I trap the arm, okay, instead of going in with this kind of C-clamp grip, which you can do, there's a much easier way to turn the person. Okay. Anytime I turn my opponent on his side, the first thing I always do is I always step my leg up. Okay, so I bring my leg up. And the reason is, is because if I turn him sideways here, my leg is down, it's very easy for him to flatten your leg and catch. He's gonna catch my leg, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my leg up but right by his hip, and I'm gonna use my hand to push his elbow, and this hand is pulling. So I'm pushing and pulling at the same time, okay? So this pushing and pulling really helps me to be able to turn him on his side. From here, I can sneak my hand inside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring everything into his body, okay? So from here, when I grab, instead of grabbing my wrist, because what happens is this elbow, if his elbow's out, as I try to roll him to his belly, we kind of get stuck on this elbow. And so the idea is I wanna bring everything from here into his body, okay? If he's curled up in a ball, that also prevents me from being able to roll him down. So that's why I showed this uh, pulling him open is basically getting him to be straight so I can flatten him out. So when I slide my knee away, right, I open him up, okay? So from here, all right, if we change the angle a little bit, you guys will be able to see. Once my heel is inside, I'm gonna slide my knee away and I pull him open. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my chest on his shoulder. Now watch this, this back leg is actually really important, okay? So once I pull him open, I'm gonna use my back leg and my toes are on the ground and I actually push, right? I push with his leg, that helps me to drive him over. And then I'll get my foot inside, okay? From here, once I have my foot inside, I'm opening my knees, I'm spreading my knees wide and I'm pushing with my hip to create some pressure. So this is what really helps to keep him flat is the spreading of my knees apart and the engagement of my hips. Now, a lot of times what happens is once all of this weight is here, this arm that's underneath gets stuck, right? If I just try to jerk it out, keep that tight, and you can even pinch here, keep it tight. If I just try to jerk my arm out, it's hard, okay? So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna show you guys the details of this, I open my hand up and I start to turn my hand back and forth. So my mm -hmm. hand starts to turn back and forth, okay? So once we're there, obviously there's different ways, but the, the key to this is I'm always, if his head is turned one way, the choking arm will always go 
uh, around to the side of the chin. So if his chin is this way, this will be the choking arm. If his chin is turned this way, this will be the choking arm. So that's really, really important. I always want to make sure that my elbow is lined up with the chin, okay? One of the ways that I can peel his head off the ground, so if I haven't done it by bringing my forearm next to his head, I use my, my thumb right here in his eye socket. And I put my forearm or my wrist right at the bridge of his nose to be able to lift his head. So this is a really, really nice way, especially if we're in a fight and... Um, biting something we have to worry about mm -hmm. i'm worried about someone biting i don't want to bring my arm next to his mouth right that's just a dangerous position to put my arm because at this point it's kind of life or death situation for the person on the bottom and so if someone were to put their arm in front of my mouth i would certainly if my life depended on it take a chunk out right mm -hmm. and so from here i use my knuckle and i go right by his eye bone and I just bring it across. And I use, what happens, what you can see is this gives me a really nice grip, right? My wrist right at the bridge of his nose, and my thumb here just kind of fits right in his eye socket, okay? So I can lift up his head, one hand goes around. Now, instead of having my hand on the top of the head, what I'm gonna do is I create some room here by my chest so that my hand goes inside and behind the head. So what I do is I come in with a knife hand, and my hand slides around the back of the head. So I don't want my hand on the top of the head, even though his arms are buried right now, right? If his arms were to be free, if I were to make the mistake and, or, or I didn't have him trapped, if his arms are free, I don't want to risk him pulling that hand off the top of uh, my head. So once I get his head up, my hand comes and like, look, I give myself some room. So most of the time we're trying to get here, I can't get my hand behind his head because I don't have any room. So give myself a little bit of room, hand goes over my hand, Okay, so I don't need to do this, right? Especially if his hands are free, he's gonna grab my arm. So my hand will come over, I slide it behind the head, and then everything is here, head down, I glue my head to the back of his head, elbows together, and it's very, very gentle. So the problem, one of the problems is this hand. If I keep a fist, what you see is my fist is very large. If I just try to pull my arm out, there's no way it's coming out, it's stuck. So I want to make my hand as small as possible, so I open my hand, so I make a knife hand. Now, as I start to pull, what I do is I'm constantly keeping this engagement of pulling, and what I start to do is I start to turn, right? So even, when him, even with him holding my arm, if I just try jerking it, it doesn't really come out. What you'll notice is I pull, and it goes back in. I pull, it goes back in. It kind of keeps getting stuck. But if I start to turn my hand, Right? So I will start to turn it back and forth as I'm pulling it, as I keep constant tension with the pull to be able to get my hand out from this position. Right? And that's what frees my hand. It, I, it comes out a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, but at that point, I can take my time. Right? And then as I come in front of his face, what I will do is, especially if he has his chin tucked, I want to get that chin up. So I'm going to come here right by his eye. And I, my, my thumb bone fits perfectly into this eye socket. So this is a great place for me to actually create a grip. What happens is a lot of times we're sweaty, right? And we're fighting. If I try to lift his head just by pulling up his head, keep your chin tucked. My hand will start to slide over his forehead. My fingers are sweaty, his head is sweaty. But this, keep your chin down, this gives me a perfect grip. And also what happens is I avoid putting my forearm, my arm next to his mouth. And from here, pull, keep your head down. It's very difficult for him to put his head down. So again, hand goes here. A lot of times you see, it's, so I give myself room. I'll give myself room. I put my belly forward, lean my chest back. I have room, hand goes behind, make a fist, and then it just takes a little bit of pressure. So, a lot of uh, details there to the choke. All of these little details obviously make things a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective. So I know uh, I had, Besides Ty having tons of uh, comments on his video, I've had people throughout the years reach out to me by email and you know on my uh, Facebook page and all kinds of other places trying to find out what the hidden details are. So there you guys have it. Those are all the details of the choke starting from the gift wrap position, how to get them on their side, nice and easy. Push the elbow and pull the arm at the same time. Make sure you put your leg up first. Okay, when you're flattening them out, make sure you're driving with your back leg, that back leg generates a lot of power to be able to turn them on their belly. Make sure we're pulling that arm into the body because what happens is what prevents the person from really being able to be rolled belly down is if they have anything sticking out from their body. We want them 
smooth like a log, right? So if they have branches sticking out, like elbows and stuff sticking out, when you try to roll them, it's gonna get caught. So that's why we wanna open the body up. We want them to be like a cylinder type shape, right? With nothing sticking out. So we bring everything in close to the body, pull that arm in close to the body, and then we use that back leg, pushing off the toes and using our chest on the back shoulder to really drive them flat, belly down. And then once I'm there, I'm engaging my weight. I keep my weight on him so that he can't pull his arms out. If I take the weight off him, so if I'm not using my hips to keep pressure on him, a lot of times they'll get their arms out. That's not a big deal, but it does create some problems as I'm starting to attack. They can, their hands are a little bit more available to defend the choke. They can start to grab, they can start to use their arms, right? So I'll, preferably we want the arms buried. It takes a little bit of time to get that hand out, but just make sure you're turning, turning, turning to get the hand out. And then obviously one arm around the neck. If I need to lift the chin, I can use this hand to lift the chin, one arm around the neck, make sure the elbow is lined up with the chin, and then hand going over and behind the head, right? We wanna make sure that hand is behind the head so there's no risk of them pulling it off, right? And that's the, the ideal way to do the rear naked choke anyways. We never wanna put the palm on the back of the head. Make sure you go with the back of the hand on the head. Um, that's the way I was taught it, and uh, for me it's very, very effective and powerful that way. And then the squeeze, obviously, we want to pinch our elbows together. Pinch our elbows together and do a hug. So I've seen a lot of people teach the rear naked choke a few different ways. Um, the most effective way that I've seen is the way that I learned from Hickson because I've tried it other ways and I've felt other people applying me, uh, applying it on me other ways as I travel around to teach. I felt, you know, multiple different ways of people doing the rear naked choke. And the key is pinching the elbows together and then hug to your body. That's awesome, man. I really appreciate you coming here and showing us those secrets. Hey, if somebody was wanting to follow you out there in the ether of the internet, how would they do that? Um, well, I have a Facebook page. Everyone can like my Facebook page, but all of uh, my jujitsu is on hiddenjujitsu.com. So if you guys go to my website, hiddenjujitsu.com, I have tons and tons of material, and I'm adding more material on a daily basis, monthly basis, to my website. Um, and it's basically all of the jujitsu I've learned over the past. 20 something years of, of training and uh, obviously being so fortunate to be able to train with Hickson for as many years as I did, um, you know, and also being teaching, being one of the instructors at the school, having the honor of being one of the instructors at the school for so many years. Uh, yeah, hiddenjujitsu.com guys. Awesome, we'll also put a link down below and you guys keep training, don't give up, there's hope, peace. <laughs>